Hi guys, this is Rebecca again, and welcome to week 9. Uh, you know that I'm probably making this video in week 8, because week 9 I'm actually at jury duty. But, so no costume changes, sorry about that. But this week we're going to be talking about mass media and ethics. And uh, I do a lot of work with ethics in my other courses, because it's one of the subjects I've studied a good amount of. And I want to introduce you to some concepts and ideas that I'd like you to keep in mind when you read the chapter and um, you also look at the questions that we're looking at this week. Ethics is the idea of morality. It's basically what is right and what is wrong, but the concepts of what constitutes right and what constitutes wrong is very, very gray because there are many sides to an issue. I don't want to say two sides to an issue because I think that that is a, a misconception. There are many sides to an issue. Uh, when we look at ethics, we think of two forms of thinking. One is consequential reasoning and the other is non-consequential reasoning. Now, consequential reasoning is this. Before we make a decision, have a thought, a preference, or take any action, we look at the situation in front of us and we weigh the possible consequences of our thought, our action, or, or, or our belief system, right? Uh, how will my action or belief system affect the situation at hand? You may look at everything from economic issues or how it will affect the people around you or how it will affect you personally or how it will affect society at large and you weigh all these possible effects before you make a decision. Now under consequential reasoning in ethics there are several different kinds. The first one is egoism and I'm sure you've heard this phrase before. Uh, universal egoism and personal egoism. But let me just deal with egoism specifically as just one term. Egoism is this idea that we uh, look at the consequences of, of, of a possible action or situation and we make the decision or the action that benefits us personally, our self-interest the very most. Now I don't want you to confuse self-interest with selfishness. These are two very different things. I eat out of self-interest, but that doesn't necessarily make me selfish, right? Sometimes our actions when we're fulfilling our self-interest is also selfishness. For example, I'm going to steal a lot of money because I want to would be a form of selfishness and self-interest, right? Now, egoism uh, was brought up with in our modern times by uh, the philosopher and writer Anne Rand. I'm sure you've probably heard about her. And uh, I made a, also a post in the announcements about her as well. And she was a major convert to this idea of the free market of ideas, the free market of economy, uh, and capitalism in general. And within the free market of ideas, economy and capitalism, and we've talked about this before, is this need for competition. That the best, I if we have good competition, the best idea is going to come out and the bad ideas are going to go away and we'll be able to grab that best idea. Now, though with competitions though, we are all working towards our own self-interest. And of course you see this in mass media, you see this in advertising in the news that certain stories, certain ads are going to be placed out there in order to take care of whoever is the producer's self-interest. But they try to make it look as if it's also your self-interest as well. This is what we call universal egoism. If it's in everybody's self-interest, then it benefits everybody, right? But egoism always starts from a personal space or personal self-interest. OK, so that's one term. The next term is for, for consequential reasoning is utilitarianism, or the principle of utility is the way that your textbook actually discusses it here. And this is the idea that we're going to weigh the consequences of our potential actions to try to make the best outcome for the most amount of people. Now this does not mean everybody, and this is important, because there's always a minority of people who do not benefit from this philosophy. Utilitarianism was actually uh, a, a big deal in the uh, early 1900s, the late 1800s. Uh, Jeremy Bethem, John Stuart Mills, these philosophers felt like if you could maximize the good for the most amount of people, then society would be a happier place. In order to maximize that good, you had to weigh the situations and make rules and, and laws in which benefited the most amount of people. Unfortunately, utilitarianism was used to justify slavery. 
um, and at the time, the slaves were the minority here in the United States. But using the philosophy of utilitarianism and maximizing good for the majority of people, it was uh, seen as a necessary evil to have slaves. So you can see there's a positive and a negative part of this kind of philosophy. And we also see it in advertising, right? Um, we advertise a weight loss product that supposedly is the best for everybody. Well, there's always going to be a certain amount of people it's not good for, right? Um, and we justify the small percentage that loses out uh, through this philosophy. So these are the two main ideas within uh, consequential reasoning. Now, non-consequential reasoning is when we don't bother to look at our consequences and then base our actions on that. We act, think, and do as a result of what we already think is right in our brain. Okay? So, for example, uh, divine ethics or um, uh, the go golden rule, which your text talks about, is this idea that there are rules that show us what is right and there are rules that show us what is wrong and we need to just follow those rules, period, without thinking and we will do the right action. Okay, so we don't look at consequences, we just follow the rules. The Ten Commandments is an example, right? So, thou shall not kill is supposed to be the rule that we must follow. Now, if we get into thou shall not kill a little bit more specifically, we'll see that it isn't always a constant rule in our society, but nevertheless, that is supposedly a non-consequential rule. So, uh, one of the most important ones that your textbook talks about is uh, what's called duty ethics or uh, Immanuel Kant's uh, uh, imperative. Now the categorical imperative is this idea that we have a certain duty to ourselves and to others in the world and that in order to do what is right or ethically right or moral we will follow our duty. Now if you guys remember Oliver North might be a little bit before some of your guys' time, he used this as a way to defend his actions with the I Iran Contra affair. The idea that I was just following my duty, I was just following orders. So you could see where this could be a problem as well. The golden rule is a good rule to have, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? But the problem is this, is that not all cultures uh, have the same idea and the same concept of what constitutes good behavior, right? Uh, some countries have different ideas of what constitutes good behavior than other countries. Um, some cultures, we have the differentiation religions. Um, so this also can be difficult even in advertising. Um, if you advertise for American audience, the independent woman uh, who uh, wears skimpy clothes and goes shopping and in, is power driven and runs her home, and runs the office and everything else that we often see having to do with women, you might be leaving out huge sections of the community. For example, here uh, in Seattle, we have a large community of women that don't follow these so-called American values. They have a different set of values. So it's sometimes difficult to know how to advertise, how to target our advertising, our mass media, our news through ethics to different kind of people. So that's kind of an introduction of some concepts and ideas. I'm also going to have a slideshow uh, that I'm doing through SlideShare that I'll post in the announcements. Uh, please remember, no seminar this week. I'm sorry, I'm in jury duty. So think of me and I shall think of you. And I hope you have a upright, ethical, and moral week. Thanks. <laughs>